Hey guys, so after a good two year wait, I'm officially a part of the Dribble community. Dribble is this online community that allows designers to come and share their work and see what others are working on as well. Dribble works by invitation only, so thank you to my longtime friend and great digital designer, Zach Dyson, for uh, getting me on board. Each new designer to Dribble gets their chance to post the debut shot. This is typically Dribble brand inspired and in a style that best represents the designer. So I took that on as a bit of a challenge. I've been playing around with the sculpting tools inside Cinema 4D recently to create what I can best describe as my attempt to make Disney Pixar style characters. Although I'm a long way off, it's a, it's a fun process. So with that in mind, I thought I'd try to create a dribbling mouth dressed up in dribble logo wall paint like the true fan I am. So let's give it a shot. I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, enough stuffing around. Let's get straight into this, guys. All right, to make a start, I'm just gonna use a simple capsule as our base hitting uh, MB to reveal our polygons there. And what I wanna do is, cause we're just gonna focus on the mouth, we're just gonna focus on the center of our capsule. So I'm just gonna give it a few more subdivisions, get this looking a bit bit more even. We'll um, we'll throw a couple more onto the cap there as well, just, just to keep this as even as possible for us. All right, before we can start, we need to change our layout. So let's let's toggle down this little drop down here and we'll move into sculpt. And this is, this is where we can start having some fun. So with our capsule selected, let's hit C to make it editable and then we'll subdivide it. By hitting subdivide, that, that just allows us to start the sculpting process. It doesn't actually subdivide our capsule. So, so to get additional subdivisions, we'll just hit that subdivide again and, uh, and that's looking quite nice. Now today, we're just gonna go over the real basics of sculpting. So I'm gonna try and stick to using three tools within our sculpt palette here. The pull, the grab, and, and a little bit of inflate later on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab our pull tool. As you might have guessed, pulls geometry towards you. Now if we hold down command, it'll do the exact opposite and allow us to start creating a bit of a welt inside our capsule here. And this is gonna form the basis of our mouth. Now I'm not using a massive brush or a massive amounts of pressure. I'm just slowly working in those spots and tucking in behind, behind our initial shape as well, just to create some nice depth. Now that we've got a bit of a base set, we're gonna use that pull tool, but run it alongside the outside of our mouth, this time without holding down command, and it'll start pulling that geometry towards us. Again, I'm not using a massive brush, not using heaps of pressure, I'm just easing it back and forth, just to slowly start creating a shape. For me, I like to do this very gradually, just start building it up, it makes me feel like I've got a bit more control over the final product. So doing the exact same to the bottom here, using that pull tool, just letting that geometry come towards us a bit. All right, this is, uh, this is starting to take some shape. You can see, we just wanna keep looking around, our, looking around our capsule, make sure it looks good from all angles. Now the second tool I said we're gonna have a play with is the grab tool. The grab tool is great for creating some, some real interesting looks that otherwise would be quite complex to, uh, to produce. And you can see I'm just, so I'm just starting to create a bit, more of a bit more of an interesting shape here for us by pulling up that upper lip and pulling down our top lip a little bit. Once I've done that, I'll just work, work in a bit more with our pull tool, pulling that geometry towards us. Now for something like this, we're just going for that nice, we're just going for a nice styled frame. So we're not gonna worry too much about what it looks like from the angles because we're not gonna be animating it or moving around it. But I still strongly re recommend you do 
just that during this modeling process because the better you can make it look from all angles, the more realistic it's going to look from your final render spot as well. So I'm just working around it, making sure I get right into those edges using that uh, using that pull tool. And uh, you can see we're just getting some nice lift from our lip, bringing it off our capture a little bit. You see, I'm not rushing this. I'm just working along using that same pull. You know, got a real low pressure. I'm still just using this at 20% of its pressure. And um, and that just it allows us to have a lot of control. Yeah, this is starting to look good. You can see how this is starting to starting to take some shape. Have a bit of a snarling snarling lip. Now, what's really cool is we can push push the size just like in many things here. We can push this this figure beyond 100%. So let's grab that grab tool and let's let's really crank up our size here. This will allow us to grab larger portions of our model and really art direct that that final look. lips starting to um, start to take a bit of a shape we'll just focus a little bit again on the actual inside of the mouth making sure that we're getting plenty of plenty of depth I'm just gonna subdivide this again give us some nicer geometry to work with here See, I'm just constantly moving around our object, making sure this looks good from all angles, really diving in there, getting some nice depth inside our mouth. Remembering to hold that command key while we're using the pull tool, and that'll push the geometry away from us. And that works across the board with all the sculpting tools. If you hold down command, it'll, do the, it'll go in the opposite direction that it's intended to. See, sometimes the pull tool doesn't quite do what we want. You can see here it's, it's sent our lip the wrong way, whereas I just want to fatten this lip up. So this is where I really lean on the inflate tool. And as you might have guessed, this will inflate our geometry and get some nice puffy lips for us. You can see how easy this is coming together. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging and we're, and we're creating what would, what would otherwise be quite complex. And what I love is we've been able to art direct this with just using a couple of the sculpt tools. I'll dive into some of the other tools in a later tutorial, but these three are definitely my go-to. And if an amateur like me can create something pretty cool, I'm sure you guys can as well. Now with something like this, because we're going for a nice organic finish, there's no real magic number or go-to guide to get the final outcome. It's just all about tweaking and getting something that looks good to your eye. So you can see how easy this has been for me using just these three very versatile tools. So I'm just gonna power through this, get this done, and I'll catch up with you guys in just a sec. Okay guys, now that we've got our mouth sculpted, I just want to give you a bit of a scene breakdown of how I composited my final render. You can see I've got this lit simply with a HDR Studio rig from Grayscale Gorilla, and all that's in our entire scene is these three textures. After our mouth, you can see in our hierarchy, we've got the dribble, so let's just turn that on. Let's see how that comes together. So this dribble has been made up of two simple capsules, and I'm using a spline wrap to drive them along these two splines that are just falling out of our mouth there. Let me just, let me just remove these transparent textures for a sec so you can see what we're dealing with. And after the dribble, we've got our teeth. Let me just turn on these top teeth for a sec and you can see how that works. I'll toggle that down and let's just turn off our cloner as well as our spline wrap. And you can see we're left with just this tooth, which again is another capsule, just scaled down on Z this time. So let's turn back on that spline wrap and that cloner and you can see we've got this nice row of top teeth and that is simply mimicked and thrown down beneath. Now applied to both our cloners, top row and bottom row of teeth, I've just added a step effector and that just gives us a bit more scale, it gives us a bit more of a realistic finish. Now let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you how I composite a few simple layers together. Now first up, I did a bit of, a, almost a bit of a clay render, just still highly reflective, but it's got a bit of a bump. It's not as, not as glossy. After that, I spat out our 
high gloss, our pink dribble branded mouth. Now, to get that war paint lines, let me show you how that works. I duplicate, I duplicated our clay render that we spat out and just masked out that logo, adding a little bit of grunge just so it feels a bit more worn. And by shifting the levels, I'm able to get that black finish that, that really represents the war paint. Now I flattened that, took that over into Lightroom, gave it a couple of adjustments, and you can see this is what we've ended up with. And I'm really happy with it. I think that's come out looking quite nice. So uh, thanks guys. I hope you can take something away from it. Like I said, we just used three very versatile tools within that sculpting setup. And I really encourage you guys to jump in, have a bit of a play and see what you can come up with. And um, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks. So with that in mind, I thought I'd try create a dribbling mouth dressed up in dribble logo wall paint. And uh, oh, fucking hell, that got big on me. <laughs>